Hi friends! Today we're going to talk about some arcs. If you caught my, I think it was my September wrap up, I don't even know anymore. Um, but I previously in the video sometime in the last couple of weeks discussed that I have all of my arcs on NetGalley broken down to where I'll be reviewing about four or five a month. Uh, this video was supposed to go up in October, but it's going to go up at the beginning of November. So there will be two arc videos this month, uh, one in the first week of November and one the last week of November, which also leads me to mention that during the month of November, there will only be one video a week, um, one regular video and one live stream instead of my two regular videos and a live stream because I'm doing extra live streams and because I want to be productive this month so I am pulling back a little on content uh, just for November because it's Nano month so um, you should be getting this arc review my October wrap-up my October TBR takedown and the arc reviews for November and also, so there's a fifth one, um, my writing retreat blog. That's what it is. Okay. Okay. So let's start off with our arcs. The first of which is going to be the X Hex by Aaron Sterling, which is also the pen name of Rachel Hawkins, whom I love. The X Hex starts off with our main character who had just recently broken up with her boyfriend, both of them are witches. Uh, something about she found out that he was betrothed to someone else and he hadn't told her. Um, he was going to go home and fix that problem. And uh, her and her cousin were like, we should hex this guy. Just like a playful hex. Something like us without magic would do. And they hexed a lot of really fun things. Like his hair would not do the thing that his hair does and that he would have hard times pleasing women in bed and lots of other fun things that they hexed him with. Uh, but the hex wasn't real, or so they thought. And a decade later, he has to come back to the small town that she lives in, where she works at this university. And that's when the hex kind of takes effect. And when you know it, they still kind of have feelings for each other. I loved this book. Sorry if the angle just moved. I had to go grab my planner because I couldn't remember what I rated these things. Uh, so I ended up giving the X Hex a 5.25 out of 5 stars. Much like with the Love Hypothesis last month, it's more of an emotional 5.25 because like that's a perfect rating. Um, for me, this book hit everything I wanted out of like a adult romance, witchy, rom-com, like it hit everything that you would want out of that description of a book, or at least everything that I wanted out of that description of a book. And I just had a fantastic time reading it. I really loved it. Um, I have read a shit ton of books this month and it is one of my favorites. I've read a shit ton of books this year and it's one of my favorites and I'll be talking about it for a long time and I do plan to reread it. Um, it's gonna be probably, it might be a, re a yearly reread for me. There are very few books that I reread yearly, but this one might become one of them because I really loved it. We then have A Curse and Ash by Julie Zentopoulos. This is a fellow author tuber slash booktuber and I will link her in the description box down below for you to peruse if you so choose. Um, this book follows Ashlyn who is part fae, part human witch. This is what we're calling a contemporary fantasy uh, because it is set in a contemporary world but does include fae and witches. I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I really loved it. The plot follows our main character Ashlyn who uses her powers to help um, the investigators, like the police investigators, solve um, fae related crimes. Something that witches need to use their powers is a Ravdi, which is a human who helps them channel their powers. And so she, at the beginning of this book, kind of gets tied to a guy who does not want to be anybody's Ravdi. Um, but she gets stuck with Ashlyn. And also, on top of that, she has a wonderful uh, fae prince of sorts who she's betrothed to outside of her own control. And 
while this book deals with like bad guys and bad fae and kidnappings and friendships and found families and all of those fun things it also includes a really open and loving polyamorous relationship and that is done so well in here um all of like the consent and just like making sure that everybody who's involved in this relationship is okay with the relationship and making sure that everyone's feelings are being addressed done so beautifully so well if you like to read those kind of smutty books but wish they had a little more like real world characteristics despite the fact that there's witches and fae but a little more what you would want to happen in the real world in your relationship highly recommend i then read the orphan witch by paige crutcher which i gave a 2.25 out of 5 stars this was not a jessica book I sometimes occasionally when I'm doing that galley will just be like this has a witch in the title it sounds fun let's request it and then I get it and I realize that it's kind of like a historical fiction which is not my jam or it's just kind of boring and that's kind of where the orphan witch fell for me so the orphan witch follows an orphan witch she was abandoned as a child and went through several foster care homes and group homes and she learned very early on that if she looked in the eyes of anyone for longer than about five seconds something drastic would happen like they would chop off all their hair they would try to kill themselves they would try to kill someone else they would lose their shit essentially and because of that she's had a really hard time connecting to people but she does have a friend that she has met via the internet um they may have met in person and kept in contact via internet and her friend is like hey you should really come and hang out with me come to my hometown come visit yada yada blah yada and so when one of these episodes happens where somebody tries to kill themselves because they looked her in the eye she flees town and decides she's gonna go and join this friend uh once and for all there was a weird romance subplot that was so unbelievably <laughs> like there was no build up as far as like there was no build up of that character outside of the second that that character hit the page you were like well that's the love interest and I mean I know that sometimes you have that in a romance but like it shouldn't be someone that's not exp like how do, how do I say this like okay in the previous book we just discussed in A Curse and Ash you know going in that Ashlyn has like from the synopsis you know Ashlyn is connected to a Ravdi and you know that she's connected to a Fae Prince you know there's going to be a romance there so like when you walk into that and you see that character you're like okay I know this book's a romance and here's two people that she could have a romance with got it all in the synopsis when I walk in and there's like no hint of who the romance might be with I expect there to be a romance in an adult books I just kind of expect it at this point but when the character hits the page and you're like well there's the love interest and the love interest has not been mentioned at any point it means that it's just too plainly put out for you and there's not enough work and there's not enough build up and as someone who has learned over the past couple of years that they're demisexual that does not work for me that they just I know that it's happening and I want there to be some build up okay second thing the relationships in this are way crazy just like the familial relationships and the witchy relationships and people backstabbing people I knew who the villain was like the second they hit the page and they hit the page very early on and I was like I bet this person's doing this thing with this thing and I was right and there was really no plot twist it was a very meandering plot um it just it did not work for me uh if you like a slower paced more character driven book and you actually like the characters which i didn't you might enjoy it um but i did not like the characters therefore a more character driven book didn't really work for me um i think like the end result everything was like too easily solved and too easily done and, and the backstabbing and the just it did not work for me hence the 2.25 okay well let's move on speaking of books that didn't work for me all the feels by olivia dade technically spoiler alert by olivia dade so i had an arc of all the feels which is the sequel to 
spoiler alert. And I was like, well, I'm gonna have to read spoiler alert so I can read all the feels. I DNF'd spoiler alert. And I DNF'd spoiler alert when we got to the character that is the main character of all the feels. Um, I knew going in that it was like this actor in a big time TV series meets with this plus size cosplayer of a character from that series and like she romances that her character with this actor's character and then he like comes to her rescue which is a whole other thing and they end up doing like this publicity stunt date thing that they end up like continuing on a date but here's my thing this guy is pretending to be so stupid like so dumb that he won't even talk about things he enjoys or things he likes because he wants people to think he's a big dumb meathead jock and he expects her to like him while also not telling her anything about himself and also did I mention that they know each other on forums online because he writes fan fiction for this world and she writes fan fiction for this world and they know each other behind usernames but he can't tell anybody because he'll lose his job except his job is over because they're no longer filming that show and I just all of the lying all of the the scheming behind the scenes and just <sighs> at one point he opens up to his best friend who is the character the main character the main love interest from the second book and he's like telling him all this stuff like you know this is the girl that I have had this huge crush on for all these years that I've been talking to in these chat rooms and this that and the other thing and should I you know should I tell her now that I've met her in person that she's the that you know that that this is me and that I really care about her and his response is three words dude your job it's literally what the book says his response is three words dude your job and I'm just like you have a shit friend and I can't back this person right now so I'm definitely not gonna back them in the next book and it just it didn't work for me um I don't like that much lying and scheming in the first 14 percent of a book it just didn't work for me so I dnf spoiler alert which means I also um did a dnf on um all the feels and then the last arc that I had for this month was The Lighthouse Witches by C.J. Cook and I gave that a 3.5 out of 5 stars. A. This would have rated better if it had a different cover. I should have rated it based off of the UK cover which is fantastic. The American cover sucks. Um, so it would have been closer to like a 4 with a better cover. Okay? But you know like cover ties into it all of my rating scale and sometimes it helps and sometimes it hurts. Um, so this book follows four point of view characters. We have a mother with three small children, the eldest of her children at age 15, the middle of her children 22 years in the future uh, at age like 32 I think, and then an unknown male character when we start out at the beginning. So you get multiple time periods. You get the mother and the oldest daughter in the past and the middle daughter in the future. So the mother gets hired to paint this mural inside of an old lighthouse and because she's low on money and she needs to raise these three girls she takes the job, moves her family to this secluded island and starts working on this mural there. Her and her eldest daughter don't really get along very well and she meets this town's people. She kind of reminds me of Chastity Pariah from um, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Like this bitch knows everything about everyone. But there's a weird thing that goes on in their hometown. And it is, they have what they call, they have these change lanes um, that sometimes can occur. Like a child will go missing and then a year or two or five later they'll return. Um, and they're like the same age as they were and the only way to get rid of them is for their mother to take them to like the specific place in the woods and kill them and basically if you don't kill them then they will destroy your entire family well the mother goes missing the oldest daughter goes missing the youngest daughter goes missing 22 years later we're getting the point of view from the middle daughter who is now pregnant herself and engaged kind of. She's with a guy, 
she loves him but she doesn't really want to marry it's a weird thing okay so we're 22 years in the future and she gets a call from the police in this town where she used to live and they found one of her sisters and she goes back to this hospital to pick up her sister only to find out that her sister is the same age that she was when she went missing 22 years prior dun 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 so this book is us reading the story of what happened in the past to get us to where we are in the future and in the future trying to figure out the answer as to how she has this changeling in her life and what she's going to do about it. I really enjoyed this book. I did, despite the fact that it's like a 3.5, I did really enjoy it. I do feel like the plot was a little meandering in some points and it is adult lit fic. Like it's not my typical style of story even though it does have like some historical witchy um a little bit of like a vague magical vibe to it it's not typically what I would read but I did really enjoy the idea of what was happening um like where these people were disappearing to um and the people that were coming back I kind of guessed it a little early on I don't feel like the people were very smart <laughs> in uh reading context clues but me, I know I was looking for context. That's the other thing is like sometimes like you look at these clues that you're getting on what's going to happen and you're like, why don't they see this? And it's like, because they're not looking for clues. They don't realize this is a book and that there's got to be a plot point here. You do. So um, while I, I did figure out some things early on, I feel like it was meant for me to figure it out and to kind of build on other things. And the story was supposed to have other parts that were important. It was definitely a little creepy. Um, definitely had like the good fall creepy vibes. I did really enjoy it. So those were the five arcs that I had up for this month of October. Um, again, some I liked, some I didn't like, some I DNF'd, some I technically didn't really even pick up. Um, but it was, it was a good mix. I'm pretty happy with what I read this month. I think my rating on NetGalley right now is 70%. So feeling pretty good about that. Though I did just get another one yesterday and I don't know if I looked at my percentage after or before that one came through but it's for July of next year um I also got one last week for December so I had to like work it in to my my plans uh and it's a third book in a series so I have to read the second book in the series beforehand but that's okay because I have a video plan for for next month that's going to take care of that yeah I have all the things like I have so many things planned I'm so excited uh, that is all I have for today. I was reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!